Well, good morning. Tuesday? It's, yeah, grey and it's been damp overnight. I think we had a rain shower a little while ago. Um, we're a bit late uh, than usual this morning. It's half, well, it's 20 to 9. I have been awake for a while, but um, needed breakfast before I did anything today, which is unusual. Um, but I think it's because I had an upset stomach last night. And so I didn't really eat very much yesterday. And um, it has a knock-on effect, so I needed breakfast. So I haven't had enough coffee, so my mouth might, might not work in sync with me. What I thought I'd do this morning, a couple of things. This is, I think it's a five and a half inch by three and something inches. Um, if I remember, I'll pop it in the comment box because I can't see a ruler around here at the moment. And that's not like me not to have a ruler at hand. Just, it is what it is today. And this is how I'm rolling. But this is um, paper by Fabriano and it's Medieval Arlis and it's quite high cotton content. It's got two sides and I don't know whether it would pick it up on the camera. But one is a bit smoother than the other. Because it's got high, high cotton content and it's really quite thick paper, it's really lovely to work with, to draw on. Um, it'll take watercolours quite nicely. But what I thought I'd do today is, to begin with anyway, is I'm going to do some underdrawing here. And I'm going to use a white Posca pen for this. I've just started it up on some scrap paper. And all I'm going to do, and I doubt you're going to be able to see this, you may. Because I will be able to draw over this. I'm going to, I don't know whether you can see, if I bring it up to the light, can you see it's very subtle, but it's there. And of course, as it dries, it'll get even more subtle. So, but the lovely thing about Posca pens or um, Jelly Roll Glaze or Souffle is that they don't necessarily get coloured by things like distress inks and watercolours. Where am I going here? I'm looking at this from an angle so that the light catches this in a nice way. And this should become pretty apparent or clearer when I've added some distress inks. Now my only decision is how much of this do I add do I cover the whole page or do I go for um, some subtlety and an elegance of limits? Yeah. But I thought this could be fun. I had seen something similar done on Zentangle's videos where they used a, I think it was a clear glaze pen to put a background drawing on then drew on the top and used, thing, or used some water-soluble graphite, I think it was. And I've also seen um, somebody on YouTube called Zen Linnea, Z-E-N-L-E-N-E-A, where she'd used Posca pens. I've tried this before, and it is a little bit of fun. And I didn't realise this morning that I was going to do this until I was just setting up my area here of filming. So um, this is fun. My home phone's ringing. I expect it's the wrong number. Just had one. So I can always get back in touch with somebody if I need to. That's all the beauty of an answer phone. I may be at home, but that doesn't mean I'm able to answer the phone. I'm busy doing this, so anyway. Yes, I could have stopped the video and gone and answered it, but I've lost I've lost my train of thought anyway. But um I'm 
So yeah, and it adds a really interestingly quite subtle background in many ways. And the textures can be really quite as complicated or as Um, simple as you like really. So I'm going to do this and see what happens because I've not, I don't think I used this paper when I did it. And of course these pens work fantastically on toned paper and my toned paper still hasn't arrived but I did say seven to ten days after dispatch and um, they dispatched it I think on the 7th. So it could be any time now, really. And with COVID and everything, the post has become slower because of the restrictions that they do things they need to do there to keep their workers and everybody else safe. So, so it's no big deal. So yesterday I was talking about all kinds of things that became a bit personal because I think there were some things that I needed to hear out of my head that have been rattling around, but I hadn't actually heard the words so that I could, I could hear whether they rang true for me or not. And it was all a bit personal. And so I decided to do a very quick, sorry, not getting me chatting today, but I've sped the video up, given you some music. Hope you enjoy what you see. Now, of course, I have no idea whether people have not, but yeah, it happens. And the voiceover that I used in the video editing software I use, which is Mavavi, which is really quite simple and intuitive. I'm, I think I've said before, this is going to be, it is what it is kind of channel. There may be editing as I get my head around it and, you know, sped up bits and voiceovers rather than me talking live perhaps, but, um, Mostly, I think it's going, you know, it's not going to have bells and whistles and things like that. It's going to be what it is. So I don't know if you can see. Tilt it, you can just see. That background I've just drawn. And it, it's just patterns and things. I'm going to do another one while that one dries. In fact, this is so much fun. I could end up just doing this and then adding colour. So, um, yeah, so that's me and video editing really. Um, now and again these need a bit of help to start. I think this might be by the older one. This one I'll we'll use it. So that was a bit of a strange thing yesterday. Oh yeah and the Mavavi software the the the, the tool I used within the photo or the video editing sweet part of it um, only allowed me a fairly small number of seconds before it sort of like said right that's enough and turned itself off so I did it twice and with bearing that in mind forgetting to make a note of how much time I actually did have which was really clever so very quick garbled so i need to have a look around because i'm sure i did see somewhere where you could record a voiceover and that is precisely what i would like to be able to do in circumstances like that or just going forward really because um i think it could be useful because I will witter on about personal stuff. It's, it's one of my failings is that I can become too personal and tell everybody my business if I'm not careful. Um, I don't know why. No idea. It's this is probably some deep psychological reason and so on. But um, Oh, that was interesting because I didn't see where that line was. This is the one difficulty. You know, I could have put some colour down first, then done this, and then added more colour on the top. 
but then I could end up with colour that's too dark to draw on except with a white pen which defeats the whole purpose of this really. This is quite um, it's like looking through a crystal facets or structure almost but not a very regular one. It's okay, it'll do. It's just a background and um, backgrounds need to be interesting but not necessarily not necessarily the highlight or the star of the artwork so so yeah so I did get out yesterday um, I didn't go for a walk per se but I had some errands to run I had to go to the pharmacy and um, things like that and um, I needed to go and get some milk which I did and um, I came home and I was exhausted and I know why it's because um, something was brewing in my tummy tum tum and that kept me up until late so I'm likely to crash again at some point today it is what it is and I just go oh well then you know I'm feeling better that that part is stopped and I know what it is so it's nothing serious but um, it was unexpected I think to hormones so These pens you have to pump to get them um, started again sometimes because that's what they're designed to do. I think these have kind of an acrylic ink in them or an acrylic paint but it's not shiny it's quite dull when it dries which is what allows and it's opaque so it should in theory show through white or fairly white with the distress inks on the top. You shouldn't take all that long to dry to be honest because this paper is really quite absorbent because it's cotton rag. I think it was designed for calligraphers and it, I will warn you, it's not cheap. I think I got a hundred pieces of this for about £30, which perhaps is relatively cheap. But I can remember buying this paper years and years ago in, in the form of, I, I must have found it in a stationer somewhere and thought, oh, that's beautiful paper. And it, you, you know, back then it was expensive and I thought, oh, do I get it or not? And I did. And I don't know what's happened to it. It, I, it may have got, it may have been something that ended up, I took it into the school I worked at and it remained there when I finished. Or I may have just, so you can see that one, it's all kinds of arches, it's not easy to see but it'll be better and this was the one before it which is all a bit more um, squared and geometric. Right, I think I'll leave it at three for today, oh, at least for the video. So when I saw it available I thought, oh I'm going to get some of this. And why am I going to get some of this? Well, because I can, for no other reason. Okay, it's Distress, distress Inks today. And on the first one, I want to use some oranges and yellowy colours, I think. Bring, you know, it's a bit grey out, this one. The sun is trying to poke through the clouds, but it's not necessarily doing a really good job of it. Oh, this is interesting because it's not really. Oh, it is sticking to that pen, to the pen. Oh, I'm disappointed. Perhaps I might need water on this, which is possible. 
I'm not happy with that big blob there. So I'm going to stand up and move. I'm going to get a spray bottle there and a brush here. Yep, I've got a spray bottle of water. Let's give that a spray and let's have a look at moving it around perhaps. It does actually show through. It's very subtle. Maybe just because I've used quite subtle, subtle colour here. The water does help with this, I think. So, and of course it's helping me spread this here around because it is a bit on the uh, intense side. I think you can see that that is showing through just that bit. Very subtle. I have to be careful how much ink I do put on these. And yeah, I could just make some watercolory stuff up and do it that way, but you know, so that's going to have to go to one side now to dry. Because it's going to take a little while to dry. Okay, let's try the next one my brush out the way. That's interesting because I was hoping to use ripe persimmon. Perhaps I will on one and just see how it goes. It may be that I need to rub a lot of the ink off and be really light-handed with it. And the paper is textured so that will influence everything here I guess. Again it's sort of like it's um it's really quite interesting because it's sticking. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it to stick to the Posca pen. Or perhaps it's you see it? It might be. Ooh, no. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, let me have a look here. That's what I've got here. I'm going to use another piece of this kind of dry foam. Wet it on the white side and let's see. Oh now that's easier than the brush. Yeah, that's what's needed is a bit of moisture and spread it out. And then I think as it dries. I might get away with more colour on here to be honest with you. I'm not sure it's a good idea to do it when it's wet but this is all an experiment. So there we go and then let's just spread it out and see what happens. I might just need that a little bit extra water here. Just a drop of water, just literally a drop. Yeah, this is pulling the paper up, so I have to be careful. It's only a piece of paper. We'll see how that dries. It may dry all right, it may not. This one, I think, is as it's drying. I think that white might be beginning to show up a bit more. Okay. Maybe not the best plan there with that one. But, you know... So it's only a piece of paper and if it means that I can't use that one or I have to use that one in a different way, uh, so be it, isn't it? Now then, let me try a darker colour. Oh, oh that one was my, one belongs in there with the yellows. Hmm, abandoned coral, I think, today. It's a lovely, it's a lovely pinky colour. Um, this is surprising me because I would have thought that 
this would have wouldn't have stuck to the um these areas but you know so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to spray it and just leave the water to do what it wants to do with it being distressing so that will take some time to dry don't know how it's going to work right I said I wasn't going to do any more but I am I'm going to take I'm going to take a sheet this one while these are drying I'm going to use some abandoned coral see the texture on this and this is the smoother size I think and to get the texture of the paper comes through but I'm I'm happy with that to be honest with you but it's part of the um, the properties of the paper and I'm reaching over here in front of the camera which is naughty of me so I've already said today it is what it is when I when I'm videoing and you know I'm not gonna I'm no expert and I don't think I want to become oh gosh that's got writing on it look the back it's because I was trying different pens out on there to see how they'd work but um yeah let's go for oh let's go for some toned browns some nice brownie colours I think I'm gonna go with I do rather like rusty hinge and I, oh, I might dig out the blues actually as well because I do want to see what this colour looks like with a a rich blue um, not a bright blue but you know one that would look like the colours colour of blue you find on rust perhaps I'll use that so, just that one, that was quick it's a lovely colour. It's why I never used to like browns and oranges and so on much, but they do seem to be growing on me just a tad. I'm fertling around over on the side because I've put my distress ink box in the box that I've got all the distress ink containers in and bits of this cut and dry foam and you know, other odds and sods um, to one side here and um, that belongs in the brown. Try to keep these you know pieces of cut and dry foam that go with colours in the box so that the ones that I've cut up um, are they're you know are fresh and new so that when these become just that little bit um frayed or a bit too lucky to work. Actually, that doesn't. I like that. That it's not blue. It's changed, obviously, because they will react with each other. But I like that because that is really, that's really aged, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, welcome to my world of. Oh, that works nicely. Oh, I like that. Let's do some more of it. Yeah, I'm going to do a bit on the um on this abandoned coral as well around the edges, just a little bit, I think. Because I do like these a darker edge on the paper. It gives it that natural border and separates it from any new background perhaps I might use. And because these are mould made and die cut, I think, you get this edge anyway around them, this slightly raised area on one side and slightly slightly impressed on the other perhaps. That actually works nicely. How are these? That one's fairly dry. Look here, let's see if we can just add a bit of this. This is, you know, so well, let's try it and see. So, yeah, still a bit damp, but that's fine. Um, it does grunge, grungeify. It's just that bit. And it is grungeifying these white lines again, but that's okay, perhaps. Tissue. Just having to have a clean sheet there. This is no one I do with it. 
you know, it doesn't wipe it off. So perhaps these, it's very subtle, but it is there, that background. Yeah, there we go. So perhaps a bit on this one as well, because that one's more or less dry. The other one where I sprayed it with water and left it isn't dry yet. It's nicely arched still. So that one will take a while for anything much to happen. So actually that, that chip sapphire works really quite nicely as that kind of edge. My new favourite thing. Okay. Right, so we've got these and I've got oh, is it one or two pieces left. It's hard to tell sometimes too. Well, let's go for it. Um, I'll pick up the browns again and use some blue and brown. Let me go for Mermaid Lagoon, I think. This is a lovely colour. I think it's a lovely blue that I like. It's verging on teal, but it's not a teal. It's not like the peacock feathers, which is very silly. But it is a lovely colour. So I'm going to do this the opposite way to the others, where I've added that dark blue as the resty bits. So I am going to I am going to add a bit of this chip sapphire around the edge here and there, but I'm also going to get that rusty hinge out and use that as well. Well, this is going to be interesting. My mind is working here as what I'd like to do next. And my mind is working on, ooh, wouldn't it be nice to draw in metallic gold on this? Which could be a genius move or it could be an absolute bleeding disaster. But I won't know until I do it, will I? Or I could use a glaze pen, but I'm not too sure about glaze pens. Now that's got a really nice... That's worked nicely. I like that. I do. That has worked really nicely. That one's my favourite so far. Okay, we're on a roll with blues and rusty hinge. So let me take this peacock feathers. Oh gosh, which one was the brown one? Not that one. Not that one. Not that one, so it was probably was that one. definitely the uh, this is peacock feathers which is more of a, a greeny blue perhaps than the other and as I'm using greeny blues let's go find the greens and dig out a green from there I think perhaps crack pistachio is very much a greeny blue but I think I might go with oh I'm so useless at choosing colours. I've had this discussion often about me and colours, haven't I? Yes, we have. Let's try this one. This is um, Shabby Shutters. Actually, that works quite nicely. It blends. They should blend nicely because Distress Inks are designed to go together and blue and green are analogous colours. They're next door to each other on the colour wheel. They, um, they should work really nicely together, and mostly they do, actually. That one there, that will be fine. Okay, and let's go with the Rusty Hinge again. So I think out of the browns, Rusty Hinge and Tea Dye are my two favourites. Um, and Aged Mahogany, but Aged Mahogany would be too dark, I think, for what I'm planning to do. So let me just take some of that. And if you, I, I say this, I'm not paid or sponsored in any way for any of these products. They're all my, all bought myself, all used by myself. And I'm not promoting anybody in particular. You know, if you're interested in Zentangle, go and watch Zentangle and visit their blog. If you want to know more about Distress Inks, then I recommend you go and, um, look for Tim Holt's videos on YouTube because he really does know because he you know they're what he wants 
how for how he works in a very sort of distressed, grungy, steampunky kind of way. And he knows the products and is able to um Oh, that one has actually, I've just cleared up. Oh, it's still damp. So this one is still very damp. It's too damp. Perhaps not too damp to do. So while I'm at it, and then I can clear up once and for good. Um, get those blues, my blues. Right at the bottom, of course. Yeah, so Tim Holtz, Holtz even, is the chap who put together this kind of stuff for Ranger and he's very good at what he does it's all mixed media and you know he's got his own style and you can tell that it's his and it's great if you want to find out a little bit more about how distress inks work and the things you can do and it may open your eyes and if you're just into colouring or drawing or whatever as to the possibilities of what you can do with paper before you even think about and for me it's even before I think about drawing on it in any kind of way it's creating that background I'm not entirely sure my way of adding the white background or the white lines first has actually been successful but I'm going to say this again it is what it is <laughs> and um I just go, oh well, it was an experiment. We tried it. So let's have a look. That one has that one's really nice because I've got purple tones going on here now as well. And um as well as the browns and that abandoned coral. And that those background lines do come through. I think you can see it on the camera. Subtle, but they, they are visible. This one is just a plain sheet. That one and this one I think may be my favourite, so the blues and the greens and the rest. This one has got some lines on it. Again, very subtle, but nice. This one, actually that shows up really much better. You know, it depends on the angle of the light. This one is just colour, is it? Yes. And then there's this one as well. It's my favourite, I think. It's hard to know which is my favourite because I've got really a good, <laughs> and usually for me, I've got a good selection here. And I've pretty much kept to just two, most three colours on each sheet. Coffee needed. So I've prepared one, two, three, four, seven pieces of paper that I can draw on in about half an hour. And most of that time has been faffing around. So now it's to choose my pens. So I'll want a pen that won't be too thick, won't bleed on here. I could try, that could be my fine one. This one is my Black Mitsubishi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try them on the back. and see how thick they are. That's a nice, very nice difference, aren't they? And I am going to bring a drawing pencil out so I can roughly sketch in an edge, a border. That can work within. Sometimes it's really lovely to have a small project to do that can be done fairly quickly where a large sheet of paper can sometimes overwhelm me but to have some things smaller like this and because I haven't got the white background now the colours gone all bizarre and breathe <laughs> um, let's get a piece of paper let's let me get rid of the um, of this particular page I actually use the back of it there we go so the color might actually shine that stand, stands out a bit better there we are okay hands breathe um sometimes i find a full sheet of paper a bit overwhelming 
for something to do. And sometimes it's just really nice to do a smaller project, something that could be done quite quickly. And then I might feel more able to cope with a larger drawing. My plans today are I need to do some sketches um, and gather, gather ideas for templates for the next book. And I think sketching the, the feature, the, the main feature of these, these pages is where I need to start. I need to get a variety of, of similar things. And no, I'm not giving you any clues. You can guess away if you like as to what the theme of the next book is. I don't think it's on Amazon yet, or I haven't checked for a couple of weeks. So if you do go looking for books, my colouring books on Amazon, and you see a new one that's due out towards the end of the year, you'll get the theme of it. But I don't tell people, they can find it on there. And I rather like giving Brett the opportunity to tell everybody what the new book's about. She loves it. She loves it. Breaking a secret or you know, sharing secrets. Um, so it's going to be a day of small sketches and it's raining again. So I'm hoping that the rain will stop at some point today so I can whiz out and get a walk because moving yesterday was good for me. So and what can I do with these? Well, they can stay in a sketchbook. I can fix them in there as reference, just things for fun. But these are small enough. They could be put onto a blank card um, and used as a greeting card or a note card or something like that, or mounted on other paper to create like an image, um, a very, very small piece of art, I suppose. So I'm just gonna get rid of all the bits there. And I'm gonna start, have a look. Oh good, this isn't bleeding with the ink, although this wasn't one of the ones that had water added to it. And I think today, this has become a particular kind of flower that I'm sort of like I'm enjoying at the moment. So I think we're going to have um, a little scene here and I think maybe I'll put some um, Angela style rocks at the bottom. Because why not? Really nice to have rocks and things and foliage um, and whatnot. I like rocks that have got patterns and texture in them, not just lumps and bumps. But then that is a feature of my art. It is, yeah, everybody can see it's a rock, but let's make it a bit more interesting to colour or less of a challenge to try and colour, perhaps. It depends on your point of view. You know, everybody likes different amounts of complexity in their page, colouring pages, I think. And it's very clear to me from the members of the group that everybody's got their own favourite thing that I do. Some love my doodle world, which is very cute, very kawaii, full of so-called doodle creatures and um, images. And they are fun to draw. And um, there's a lot of requests for me to do another one, I think, because they brighten people's lives up, I suppose. Make you smile and laugh. And... Um, Then there's mandalas. I've not done a book of mandalas, but often my books do have mandalas in them. And um, mandalas are fun. They are. Um, I love to draw them. And they're very, because they've got so much in the way of symmetry and repeating pattern, 
that repetition is also very relaxing because you get into the flow of going around and filling the same part in the same way and that familiarity means that it's very relaxing to do and you can just lose yourself in it get yourself in the flow and um, it becomes a very meditative kind of practice that way it can be as that that coloring can be as challenging or not as you want it could just be as simple as using one color for one particular tiny section of the overall design and you repeat it around the circle or it could be that you choose to add um, gradients of colour whether it's monochrome or whether you are choosing different colours to do it it's it can be a very therapeutic and stress relieving and relaxing thing to do. It's also very good for hand, hand-eye hand coordination, fine motor control um, and of course pleasure and joy of creativity because colouring something in is a creative process. You are creating something. I, I, in my books I supply you with the skeleton like this is the, if this is the skeleton and I'm sure there are going to be people out there who go oh, I'd really love to colour that. And yeah, you would. You're not having it. Not this time. This is my pleasure. And I don't know whether I will add colour to it. I may go in and intensify some, you know, colours in some of the flowers. But I'm likely to choose the background colour to do that so it becomes very monochrome and stick with the colours. I think this, this is a Zen Tangly pattern. It's in different guises, I think it's called anti dots. Anti dots is a very recent variation of flex, I think. But it's a pattern that it's very familiar to me because I've been drawing it for a very long time. And it does make pretty foliage, which is what I want down here. I mean, the shapes are very reminiscent of cacti, I suppose, as well, but I'm not sure about the repetition inside, but they are very much so. The problem with working with a small piece of paper is that it's quite difficult to hold on to. And I'm also aware that if I've got sweaty fingers, I'm going to leave finger marks with the distress ink, even though it's dried. But that's fine. Now I'm going to have some of this creep up one side I think just a bit because it can because that's how it's going to grow like this and perhaps a little bit one here and one here and I may do the same actually over here Make it that little bit higher on the outside edge. And the fact it's going outside of my um, penciled in edges doesn't bother me. It's, I'm happy for things to grow outside the box, to be honest. Um, this one's really growing outside the box, I think really wants to grow in its own little way. That section there looks a bit strange so let's have some that will go like that and perhaps another one just curls around there. That one definitely is outside the box, it's on its own that's for sure and um, I'm quite happy with that. That one, that one feels finished on that side. That one doesn't quite feel like I finished it. And I think it's because this is, I need something here, I think, to connect this back to here. So it feels that it's something that's growing upwards and outwards. And 
definitely needs to have that feeling of a, a top to it in some way. But yeah, that's, that's where I've got to. I'm happy here now. That's as far as I want to draw. Go on. Go. So there's that and I'm going to add that in. I'm also going to do another one here. Go. And I have kind of made a bit of a, a mess in places of some lines, but as is my desire or wish sometimes, or I'll go back and do the same to this one. They look like they're from the same flower kind of family, they're not identical, but then which two flowers in nature are? And because I really want something that is um, in an odd group. I'm just going to add another flower here. And it's going to be, um, it's going to have some very odd sized petally things on it. But that's okay, because again, who says they have to be all identical? And there's its stem there. And again, I'm going to add some black lines, thick black lines. Add a little circle in the middle, both of all of them, so it looks more like a middle. To turn it, to, to, to turn it this way because I do want to add some leaves. Well, I really don't want them leaf leaf shaped. I would like them to be a little bit different. So I'm doing them tri fairly triangular shapes. And um, I'm going to give them the central vein. And I think I'm going to want to do something up here. Now I know this is one of these entangle patterns, but I do not know what it's called. And in fact, in this sort of um, incarnation, in incation, I like that. In incation, like incarnation, I'll work on that. This probably looks quite different. I think it might be a variation on dewed, which is D E W D. It would work like that, I suppose. So me being me. It's not exactly dude, no doubt, and to look more like it's that little bit thicker there and perhaps really growing out of this one down here. There we go. So that adds height to that side. And then here, I think I'm going to do, let me put some circles in. Because I, I do like a border around art, my art. It looks okay as it is, but I just think it just needs something. Um, I'm not being very careful about making these all the same distance apart because to be honest with you, I'm really not bothered. 
Okay, well, I did dig that other pen out and I'm going to use it now because I'm going to um, I want to do something that's much finer lined here. It's almost like little seed pods or seeds joined by little bulby poddy things or longer seeds. Where the time I'm looking at the time 50 minutes. So, this really hasn't taken me that long to do. I mean, this is the bare bones of the design. I'm going to want to go back and perhaps add color and texture or some more pattern and so on, but maybe not now in this video because I think an hour is more than long enough. Perhaps a bit too long. If you think an hour is too long for a video, let me know in the box below or in the comment box. Um, if you prefer time lapse or speeded up videos with a voiceover, let me know that way. Um, if you're happy with an hour, let me know because I'm happy to do this because it takes me that long to draw it. But um, that actually has the feeling of being Actually quite nice. <laughs> Done. This area up here is blank. Now I could leave it that way so that if I was to mount this on a card I could hand letter a sentiment in there or put something else there or I could fill it with something. Um, have a look. What could I do there? I know what I can do there. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know what the middle of these flowers are like. I can draw them straight off. Let's have some smaller ones of these, perhaps. And so on. Perhaps I'm not going to take the stems all the way down to the bottom because. They can grow out of one another, can't they? And, oh. oh dear, I've put those in a different place, but you know what? That's fine, all's well. But all flowers are unique, and some more than others, just like humans. And this one definitely wants to be out on its own. It's an angela flower. It's going to disappear behind the border and again I'm just going to do that there because I can have a leaf there and this one can have a leaf there and that's filled that space up. You know, happy flowers for a Tuesday. There we are. And oh, there's one last thing for me to do and I often forget to do this. I'm just going to pop me initials on there and the date is the 18th of May 2021 and there we go that is <coughs> my drawing for today so not only have I got that, but I have got this lovely, lovely lot of papers that I can draw on. On another day. All in an hour, or less than an hour, 54 minutes. Drawing isn't quite done, but I'm going to leave it where it is because I need to get along with other things. And maybe tomorrow or late, later today, tomorrow, I'll either add colour or shading, something to bring that line art to life, I think. 
Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I need more coffee and I need to get along with stuff. So thank you for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Just a reminder that I'm not sponsored or paid for anything, any products, any people I mentioned in the video at all. Um, everything that you see is bought out of my own money. Um, and if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. At the moment, I am doing a vlog just about every day, if not every day, because I draw every morning. But perhaps as I get into um, getting work done for the colouring book, it might not be quite so often. We'll see. Um, and I'll just say thank you. Thank you for joining me today, joining me on my vlog, vlogging journey, my arty vlogging journey. And please look after yourselves and I hope you'll join with me for my next vlog, which is likely to be tomorrow, but it may not be. We shall see. So take care. Bye bye.